Then what we need to do is we're actually going to create another method for this. We're going to we're going to uh, you know what should we just do it here or hmm um no 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 forget that forget new array we're just going to create a new array valid file types is equal to this array right here. It's going to have this. And we need to declare this as a string array. So private string array valid file types. Still giving us. Ah, I see. Okay, so I guess we can't, we don't have to do this here. I mean, we can't. So we're just going to X that and just initialize it here. Because these are constants. Alright. Just going to add some space because it's a constant. So these are our valid file types right here. And what we're going to do is check if the uh, whatever is in this text field, if it's a .mp3. No, 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 no. not in the text field. We're actually going to use the actual fi the vim file itself. We're going to check if the vim file is an actual. No, what am I saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah uh, we're gonna do this because if the user, if the user renames his uh, his uh, his thing, if the user, re for example, deletes this or makes it something like HP four or something like that, then that's why we need to check the, whatever's in this text field and see if the if it ends with one of our valid file types when they click add file to book so let's do that right now add vim file to book go in here now I'm just gonna create a for loop I really don't want to declare any iterators uh, that's just a waste of space so for int and I get but I guess you know we're also declaring an integer here but whatever i equals zero i less than our valid file types dot length and we're going to go through each of uh, the strings inside this array if if our vim file dot get name ends with, and it's almost like English, ends with, and we're just going to pass in our valid file types, the position at the position i. Now if, if the uh, file names, if the last, if the last letters of the uh, file name equal to one of these, then it's a valid file type and at this point we actually want to add we actually want to create a book object no not a book object a vim object and um, hold on a moment yeah we're actually going to create a vim object and so new vim and remember our vim our vim uh, constructor takes in sorry vim v takes in a uh, what does it take in again uh, it takes in the file name 
let me just see yeah it takes in the file name so copy this get name and it takes in the data remember the data is a byte array we actually open that up for you just in case you're lazy and you don't want to go to model vim.java takes in a name and a byte the data so go back to close the adbook panel go back to our library system now we need a byte array and let's actually go back to a uh, main system.java and I'm inside this method in which I'm reading in the file data into a, uh, a the byte array so let me just copy and paste um, <clears throat> read it inside our data right this one copy this for now and before even before creating the vim object We need to create local variable data, which is an, a byte array. So let's do that. Um, here, private byte array data. New byte, it's going to be the vim file dot length and we're going to read in the file into an array of bytes and store it inside data using this and again we don't need to close this file input stream yet no actually yeah just close the file input stream here uh, let me see yeah okay so let's just create a uh, local variable oh we're gonna make it global so private file input stream FIS import the file input stream and we're going to pass in the vim file read the data into the array of bytes close the uh, input stream